Hello. In this talk, I will focus on uh, harnessing adaptive novelties in uh, automated generation of cancer treatments in a rather simple agent-based model. Our main focus for and the uh, main inspiration for uh, doing this work is the fact that malignant tumors are heterogeneous structures that can rapidly acquire drug resistance. Such resistance can arise via two main mechanisms. First one is selection of pre-existing resistant cells, and the second one is the emergence of resistant cancer cells that continue to evolve under selective pressure. In order to deal with this problem, clinicians and researchers recently started to, to apply and design something called combinatorial therapies. In them, you can combine multiple drugs in order to synergistically eliminate the various clones that emerge in a tumor. So, first logical question is how to design such combinatorial treatment. What drugs to choose, whether those drugs should be applied sequentially or simultaneously, what are the appropriate time intervals between treatments? What should be the applied concentration of each drug? And ultimately, what targeting strategy to choose, whether to attack indiscriminately all cancer cells, to focus on cancer stem cells, to try with uh, angiogenesis, and so on. By all these questions, we are practically creating a huge space of possibilities uh, which is generated by first various drugs for targeting specific cancer cells, second by nanoparticles that can modify physical chemical properties of those drugs and third by existence of heterogeneous and highly adaptable tumor that can quickly become resistant to the primary therapy. That's why our goal was to develop an open-ended evolutionary software that will, to some extent, automate search for optimal solutions. Before going into the details of the model, I would just like to spend a few seconds on uh, explaining why we're using nanoparticles. From the practical standpoint, a uh, much shorter time is needed to develop a nanomedicine treatment than to develop a completely new chemical drug. In nanoparticles and or nanomedicines, we are using existing drugs, attach them or in some way associate them with nanoparticles that can be organic or inorganic, uh, thus modifying properties of those drugs. We can, by, by this approach, we can improve site-specific targeting of drugs, we can increase in vivo stability of drugs, we can extend the drug's blood circulation time or allow for controlled drug release. So, in the model, we choose to go with agent-based approach and with Python environment. At this stage, the model is simply two-dimensional space populated with agents that represent cells or cell agents and nano-agents. Cell agents are further divided into cancer cells, cancer stem cells, and healthy cells. All cell agents in the simulation are unmovable. Tumor cells can change phenotype with some small probability during the simulation, and that's quite important because phenotype change leads to altering visible properties of cancer cells and cancer stem cells, and the nanoagents can only see or recognize those cell agents through 
visible properties. In contrast, nano agents can move, can attack, can observe and memorize environment. At the beginning of simulation, nano agents knowledge of the environment is blank so they do not recognize any type of cell agents. Their memory is limited and at each time step they move randomly and after the move movement they observe their environment by checking visible property of a cell agent with whom they share grid location and then compare observed property with those stored in their limited memory. Since memory is quite limited, at the beginning of simulation it is empty, then they rapidly learn about the environment and when the memory became full in order to learn something new, they need to forget all this acquired memory. When nano agents share the grid position with cell agent, it will try to penetrate into that cell, and probability of penetration is higher if nano agent encounter already memorized cell agent. We did not apply zero or one approach where nano agent will penetrate if it is recognized and not if it is not recognized, because in reality, it is probably impossible to design a so super specific drug that will only attack and enter some specific cell line. They usually just have a preference for some cell types. In any case, once inside the cell, nano agent will try to either kill or to inhibit division of the whole cell. During the simulation, nano agents can evolve, they can uh, change their speed, memory size, and probability of entry into cells. As I said at the beginning, our main concern is tumor heterogeneity, and this simulation. Uh, we represented it as randomly chosen subpopulation of cancer cells that are partially resistant to therapies. The resistance is manifested through either modifying binding of nanoagents to, to them, or modifying the situation or internalization rate, or killing or inhibition of division probability. At the same time, all kinds of stem cells are partially resistant to killing and inhibition. During the simulation, in order to, to, to see what is happening, we calculated fitness at each time step, which is simply the ratio of healthy cells to cancer cells. In order, of course, to, to implement a simple competition between Nano agents. We designed a very basic procedure. So when nano agent kills cell agent, it got some positive or negative points: positive for killing tumor cell, negative for killing healthy cell. And then performance of each nano agent is measured after ten time steps. Five percent of top performers are duplicated and the same percent of worst performers are eliminated. So the entire population of nanoagents remain constant. In simulations, we injected 100 nanoagents. Goals for this set of simulations I will present you is first to check whether nanoagents are capable of dealing with changeable tumor and to what extent and also to check whether precisely tailored combination of therapy can be more efficacious than generalized therapy. In order to, to test those two assumptions, we created two types of benchmark nanoagents. First one are those that cannot learn. 
So they can attack only initially recognized cancer cells and cancer stem cells. So if tumor cells mutate or encounter any kind of uh, phenotype change, uh, they will become invisible to those nanoagents. And other group of benchmark agents are nanoagents that generally attack cells, both healthy and tumor, with slightly slight bias towards tumor cells. Real life equivalent to that is treatment with static drugs. So how does it look like? As you can see here, we have green space, which represents healthy cells that surrounds tumor, which is composed of ordinary cancer cells, these are gray ones, and purple ones are cancer stem cells. Nanoagents are injected at several points in the tumor, and uh, their color change in accordance to the size of their memory. They randomly go around and try to kill whatever they encounter. As you can see below, fitness function is calculated for each time step and at some points fitness encounters a sudden drop and since fitness represent a ratio of healthy cells to tumor cells this drop basically indicates that remaining tumor cells are divided Following only number of cancer cells, we can see that the most efficacious strategy is blue line here, which represent non-discriminatory nanoagents that can kill anything with bias towards cancer cells. Learning nanoagents are a bit slower in reaching comparable number of killed cancer cells, while those uh, uh, fixed nanoagents are quite bad. At the beginning, they started reacting uh, very good, but as tumor started to change, they lose the race. However, if we compare fitness function, we can see that far, far superior are learning agents and actually the worst performing are generalized nano-agents. That's because uh, they basically, at the end of simulation, they basically killed everything, both health cells and cancer cells. In order to check what kind of heterogeneity emerges within the population of nanoagents, we counted different types of nanoagents, and uh, here are represented only those that are specialized during evolution to attack only cancer stem cells. As you can see, somewhere around uh, 500, 600 time steps, they settle down at uh, approximately one third of population. And uh, <clears throat> if we count number of cancer stem cells, we can see that at the similar time, number of cancer stem cells reach almost zero and then zero, which is far, far more uh, better results result than with other strategies. So in conclusion, we can say that in this simulation nanoagents can rapidly learn to discriminate healthy and tumor cells and uh, that nanoagents that can learn from their environment are far more superior than generalized nanoagents. Since in situ, in reality, Nanoagents, of course, cannot deliberately change their properties nor evolve, 
this finding uh, uh, basically tells us that uh, uh, combinatorial treatment is potentially far more superior when dealing with adaptable tumor. Next steps are, of course, to make the simulation more realistic. And uh, we have uh, several immediate planned steps. First one is to implement more realistic mapping between properties of nanoagents and the real chemical counterparts. The second one is to implement interactions between nanoagents because right now they, they are just ignorant of each other. And the third one is to, to merge this simulation with more realistic tumor simulator to see what can really happen in that situation. Thank you.